Welcome to Films and Stuff with your hosts, Pete Mitchell and Ethan Hunt. Hey, Pete. Welcome back. Films and Stuff. How are you today? I am good, Ethan. How are you? I am great. It is time, as is our weekly tradition, to discuss our stream or skip assignments. All right. We know the ground rules. We each assign each other a show to watch. We watch at least two or three episodes, and we report back to each other and to our listeners whether this is a must-subscribe, a mooch, or a skip. And this week, remind me what you had. I had an old show on Hulu called Second Chance. Oh, really? I never heard of this. Yeah, it's a really old show. I'm looking it up, and I'm pretty sure it came out like in 2016, Whoa. maybe 2015. On Hulu? Science fiction show, and the premise is interesting, but execution is a little off. So yeah. let me let me explain it. Yeah. So the idea of Second Chance is as follows. There's a technology company that's kind of like this vague allusion to like a mix of Google and Apple. You know, like this, the typical sci-fi thing is to create the vision of, oh, yeah. uh, you know, the quote unquote big bad tech company, right? Oh, yeah. That's run by twins. One is a little bit more tech savvy than the other. The other is a little bit more business savvy than the other. You know, like the most stereotypical thing you can think of, or the most cliched thing you can think of, rather, not stereotype. <laughs> okay. And this company has created a technology which allows you to bring back dead people. And the way they do that is by taking the memories from a newly deceased person and imprinting their memories into that of another recently deceased body that's a donor body. Huh. If that sounds familiar, it's because Ryan Reynolds actually made a movie yep. that's almost exactly like this. It does sound familiar. What's that movie called? Selfless. Selfless? That's it? Yeah. Self oh. slash less. Oh, okay. Fine. In any case, that. so yeah. it's a cliched, not cliched, but it's a concept we've heard of in the past. Yep. And so that's, that's the first part of the premise. The second premise, simultaneously, you've got this really old man who used to be a sheriff, and the sheriff was basically fired or, you know, impeached or whatever the version is for a sheriff, because he was basically a corrupt cop. His thing was results matter, not the procedures as a sheriff. And that's why he was basically fired. Okay. His son works for the FBI. Okay. And his son is actually a good guy in the sense that, you know, he doesn't like corruption. He does things by the book. It's kind of like the antithesis of what his father was as a sheriff. Okay. The sheriff is killed in the first episode. He's murdered. We don't know why, but he's murdered by his FBI son's partners. Whoa. Yeah. Dun, dun, and dun. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and then so the tech company brings the sheriff back into the body of a younger person. And then, of course, as you'd expect, the first thing this guy does is I'm going to try to find out yep. who killed me and why. And that's he learns that. It was his son's partner, and he learns that his son's partners are corrupt and that they're trying to kill his son as well. On paper, this sounds interesting. Yeah. But the problem is, after that first episode or second episode, you learn that the show basically becomes a police procedural. Mm. The father who's in the body of a young man who teams up with his FBI, who's a straight laced son to solve crimes and you know he's the gruff guy who uses old school techniques it was just like a one time thing that they put the body in or the guy's mind in the body right and then the rest right. of it is just like a who done it and then it becomes exactly and then it becomes like a typical police procedural that we see on you know any of the alphabet channels that we know yep. 
So it might as well be like CSI. Yeah. It might as well be Law and NCIS, Order. NCIS. Yeah. NCIS. Any one of these things, right? It's yeah. exactly like that. Or NYPD Blue. Is it becomes more or less a a police procedural with a thread running through the series, which is the father has to and the son have to kind of figure out what's going on, and then the uh, son learns that that the young man is now was actually his father, so he's uh, dealing with it. And I saw the first two episodes and I was out. And the reason oh. I was out was because, first of all, old show. Second of all, I saw when doing my basic research for the show, it was canceled after for one season. Oh. So when you know Oh, yeah, that that's one of your things. Yeah, that's one of your things. It's hard to get buy-in for yep. me. Like, I can't get emotionally invested or even physically invested in watching a cliched cop procedural for 12 episodes when I know that there's no, there's no more story and maybe it ends, you know, there's badly no and there's no conclusion, there's no payoff, none of that. It was super formulaic and you just know, like by the end of it, I can already tell you now, I know that by the end of the 12th episode, we're going to learn that one of the twins is actually a bad guy or maybe both of the twins are bad guys and they're obviously doing this for nefarious purposes. This isn't a technology to better humankind. Clearly, it's going to be that, you know, either the twins are going to be working together to achieve a bad thing or one of the twins is going to be working against the other twin. But in either case, the tech company is going to come off as coming off, uh, as bad. There's going to be some political play into this. It's stuff that we've not just seen before, but even if we haven't seen it before, it's boring. It's not yeah. fun. It's not exciting. The effects were kind of crappy. The acting was kind of meh. Sound effects were kind of meh. Everything was just like really, this is makes sense for, you know, a midweek police procedural on like ABC or NBC or something like that, where they're just like, we need an hour of content. Let's green light this show for, you know, five million dollars for the entire season and that's fine. Huh. Yeah, it, it did absolutely nothing for me. It's it's a skip. So we are we are still looking for our first must subscribe this year, huh? Yeah. Still searching. Unfortunately, we're not going to get there with me either, although I do have a a mooch on my hands. And that is the show, which is on Netflix, called Manifest. Now, before you get into Manifest, if I remember correctly, last week you had originally had a show called 10% Assigned to You on Amazon Prime. That's correct. I originally had 10%, which is on Amazon Prime Assigned to Me. And we've discussed more than once that a lot of the streaming services are starting to cull or cut down on their libraries. And yeah, Amazon, exactly. I can see that 10% is still on their platform, but it's only in uh, limited countries, which I think means only the US, maybe the UK. It was not allowing me to, to watch it, even with an Amazon Prime subscription from Dubai. So I had to make an executive decision and I switched to Manifest on Netflix, which was still on our list. Uh, so I just kind of like changed the order. Okay. So Manifest is about a group of people who were passengers on an airplane that took off from one side of the country and then the flight disappeared. And no one could find the aircraft. Sounds a little bit like this Malaysian Airways flight that we heard about a long time ago. Obviously, it's a, a huge, you know, mystery because it was over the continental United States where aircraft do not go missing. Or if they are missing, they're eventually found and, and crashed. Five years had passed. This airline had not been found. Everyone obviously long presumed dead. And... Then you you see basically like the the pilots saying, "Okay, everyone, you know, I'm we're making our approach into I think it's New York, JFK," and he radios a tower. He's like, "Hey, this is flight. I'm gonna make up the number, eight two eight. 
And the guy's like, what? Say it again. And you don't see this. You just see the flight take off. And, you know, you meet all the passengers on the flight. And then the flight's landing. So you don't know any of this, right? It's only afterwards that you find out that it's been five years. So it's all continuous from the from the part of the viewer. And the tower's like, what? Say it again. And the guy's like, yeah, like, we're 8 to 8. We're, you know, coming in for a landing. He's like... What do you mean eight to eight? Like, where are you from? What airline are you? And the guy's like, "Hey, like, why are you being so weird? Like, we just took off from Los Angeles two hours ago. This is who we are." And the guy's like, "No, you got to go to this runway." They put them in a dedicated runway. You know, they've got the fire trucks and the foam and the whole thing, right? Mm-hmm. Sequester the plane, and the passengers like, "What's going on?" And the you know, like, they open the doors and. You see the passengers and everyone's like, what's going on? They're like, you know, it's, it's the year 2022. You took off in 1997. You know, you've been missing for five years. Where have you guys been? And all the passengers are stunned because they were just in one, you know, continental flight, right? Flying for five hours. So time hasn't changed for them or passed for them? They look exactly the same. So now oh, you okay. get into... All the the weird things, which is, for example, there's a pair of twins, right? The girl twin, you know, is at home, and she thought that her brother twin had passed away five years ago. Now he comes back, and they're reunited, which is great. She's five years older. She's way taller than him, right? Just imagine you've been away from your spouse for five years. The spouse is now five years older. They've moved on, right? A lot of them have like new husbands, new wives and stuff. And, you know, you come back and you're the exact same age. Jobs have moved on. So a lot of this initially deals with just kind of like the practical, a little bit like the blip in MCU, right? Which is a five-year blip. You came back and like everyone was in different grades, stuff like this. It's a lot like the blip. And then there's some obviously like, supernatural element to it as well so this is kind of like remember lost yeah so it's a little bit like lost where there's something obviously magical magical is not the right world there's something supernatural about this plane about this flight you see that a lot of the passengers have like unknown connections to each other very similar to lost in that respect so i watched i watched to be honest four or five episodes and it is solid television. If you liked Lost, you will probably like this show. The major difference, I would say, is that Lost, I thought, had like a lot of humor in it, as I recall. This doesn't have like not even bad humor. It's just not even attempted. It's more of a more of like an action mystery, can I say? Or like an action drama mystery. There's there's no attempt at doing anything funny. I don't think there's any any jokes even attempted whatsoever. Uh, no funny scenarios. It's just a lot of hey, we've got this lead. Let's track it down. Let's go to this warehouse. No, you know this passenger was on the flight, but they're not on the list of people. They've been interrogated. Now the government's involved. You know, like the the typical kind of like conspiracy type drama but obviously there's some supernatural element to what happened to this flight and stuff like that which is still a mystery i don't know how it turns out so again i think it's it's not a bad show it's a solid it's we would classify it as a mooch but it's it's a decent show and again if you really like lost if you like kind of these supernatural mysteries and not just kind of like these big government conspiracy type shows this will probably be a show that you would gravitate to, but I don't think there's anything so remarkable about the show, so remarkable about the mystery, so remarkable about like the plot or the characters that like you're not going to be able to turn it off. Definitely, it's a background entertainment series. It is more than one season, I understand, but it just doesn't seem to like be grabbing me because of like anything particularly unique a lot of the drama does center around you know the age differences you know people were married now the wife has moved on 
boyfriend, girlfriend, obviously different age, colleagues, different like work scenarios. All of the all of the things that you've kind of seen in the MCU blip would apply to the show as well. Okay. Well, that sounds kind of interesting, actually. Yeah, it's not bad. I have to say the idea is is interesting, but it's very similar to your show. Once you kind of get past that pilot episode, that's kind of in the past, right? Then it's just like a a mystery. So, you know, the plane doesn't really figure into it again. The five-year, like, age gap is obviously a recurring theme, but that's not really, like, it, it's very similar, I think, to your show where there's a event or, like, a plot idea that this is centered around. But after that plot idea is kind of disposed of in the pilot or the first episode, then it doesn't really need to appear again, you know? Right. It's not it's like, like the inciting incident, right? Yeah, it's like the inciting incident. It's not like anyone has like superpowers that are like recurringly used. It's not like there's this, you know, ghost or something. It's not like a series of planes are are gone missing or people from all over the world are going missing. It's a one-time event, and obviously everyone's trying to kind of understand two things. How can I put my life together after this? And what was this thing? Like, was it a government experiment? Was it a UFO? Was it a lightning strike? You know, there's, everyone's got, like, different theories and things like this. But after that incident, it's discussed, but it doesn't really play into the series any longer. Uh, you know, it is what it is. It's a mooch. And we're still on the lookout for our first uh, must-subscribe of 2023. Indeed, and you know what'll help is if our listeners send in some recommendations for shows we should be watching. I love recommendations. Tweet at us at FNS Podcast or DM us on Instagram at Films and Stuff Podcast or email us aloha at Films and Stuff Podcast dot com. Let us know. I imagine you've already rolled the virtual die and you've doled out the assignments for this week. Of course I have. Of course you have. And for next week, you are going to be on Hulu watching oh. The Patient, hopefully. And I will be on HBO Max, double hopefully, watching Room 104. I have not confirmed if this show has been pulled or not. But I will on. let you guys know. What is Room 104? Should we guess? No clue. Should we no guess? Clue. Yeah, tell me. Uh. Room 104, I'm going to guess, is like a secret, like, laboratory that's off limits, that there's, like, some patient confined to that room or some experiments in that room. That's exactly what I was thinking as well, yeah. is that it's it, it's some, it, it's an undesignated room yeah. that everyone knows about, but no yeah. one knows what goes on behind it. Right, right, right. And what's mine? The Patient. I I have to say that sounds very similar, right? You're right. I have no idea what it is, but like I'm hoping it's something like you have a guy who's like a secret agent or something that no one knows about. He's just referred oh. to as the patient. Yeah. Yeah, I I'm going to I'm going to guess that's more of a it's on Hulu, so I'm going to say this is like something similar to what's the show that we watched on Apple TV Plus with the shrink, the shrink next door, right? Yep. I think it's going to be something similar to like The Shrink Next Door. Maybe not the same level of like scamminess, but it's right. going to be someone who goes to see like a... Oh, like maybe a, like an unethical psycho psychiatrist. Yeah, yeah, something like that. It'll be interesting because now Harrison Ford's in Shrinkage, right? Yeah, so it's so funny you mentioned that because I was just about to say, besides this... I have been watching, so there's a couple of shows that have come out that I think we should be looking at. Okay. I've already mentioned Poker Face on yep. Peacock. Yeah, you said it's amazing. I have mentioned The Last of Us, which I still think is one of the best shows yep. I've seen on TV in a while. Yep. You do love that. So I just started two new Apple TV programs. I saw Shrinking. That's Harrison Ford and Jason Segel and yeah, Jessica Shrinking. Williams. Right. Very, very good. It's for me, it's a must subscribe at the moment, having watched five episodes. I just started, I think yesterday or two days ago, I started a show called Hello Tomorrow. What's that about? Which is, it stars Billy Crudup, 
or mm. crewed up. I don't know how you say the yep. name. Very good show so far. It's a drama. It's set in like 1950s America, but oh. the 1950s that people thought the future would be like. So there are flo- there are hovercraft cars. Jetsons. Yeah. Uh, it's it's kind of like the Jetsons, but set in suburbia, middle America in the 50s. Right, right. So Billy Crudup plays a salesman who's selling residential plots on the moon. Huh. So far, I think they've only released three episodes. I've seen the first three. I am very interested. The aesthetic, I love. Mm. It's excellent. And in terms of acting, you've got Hank Azaria, you've got Billy Crudup. You've got a few oh. other people in there who I don't know by name, but I recognize by face. Very solid program so far. Okay. Uh, and then, going forward, Star Trek Picard Season 3, which is the final season, just started streaming on Amazon Prime. Are you watching it? I haven't started yet. So generally with Picard, what I do is I wait till like four, five, or six episodes are released. So it's usually ten episodes. I'll wait until a majority are released before I watch them all in one go. And then I'll start watching weekly because the first season and the second season, it took a little while for me to get into the swing of things. So I'm going to wait for them to collect a little bit. And then what you might be interested in, if you didn't catch it, Carnival Row Season 2 dropped on Amazon. No way! It dropped already? The first two episodes. Or I think the first episode. I'm in. Can we do Watch Party for that? Oh, yeah, absolutely we can. That's great. Let's do Friday watch parties again like we used to. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah, that'll be fun. Because we both like Carnival Row, yeah? We do. It's In fact, Carnival Row was a result of Streamer Skip. Yes, it was. Thank you, Streamer Skip. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, man, that's cool. Yeah, so we have Carnival Row. I think that'll be fun. Listeners, keep an eye out on our Twitter and Instagram. We will be sending out links every Friday. We're going to confirm it, but we'll let you know well in advance. We'll put out links on Amazon for Amazon's watch party. You need to have your own Amazon Prime account to join. Them's the rules, unfortunately. And then you'll be able to join us where we always maintain a chat. And we kind of like live tweet slash live chat throughout the entire program. Do you think we should do a, you think we should do like an episode next week, maybe on Picard and also on uh, Carnival Road, just to kind of like do recaps and get ready for the new seasons? So, yeah, we can definitely do that. And so speaking of which, you raise a good point. In the next two weeks, we're going to be doing an interview. Oh, yeah, we got a lot coming up. With our good friend Milo, who is involved in the industry he's an actor he's a writer and he has some thoughts on the current spate of star trek reboots oh so we can definitely get into it alley. before we speak to him this is and totally then, up our alley and possibly next week we'll also be having an interview with a professor from seattle in regards to the last of us and why we think that show really works or doesn't work that's right. So that's Dreamer Skip. We still need recommendations, but as you can see, we've got some things on our list. So please let us know what else you would like to add, and let's get some feedback if there's something that you've watched recently that you think is is worth our time. Absolutely. Or if there's a show you're interested in but you don't have the time, send it over to us. We'll have a look for you. Outsource that. Exactly. Pete. Thank you very much for rolling the virtual die and for arranging what we've got to watch for next week. And My pleasure. Listeners, we will be back next week with our reviews and ratings of these two new shows. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ethan. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day ahead. Bye. Bye now. Thank you for listening to another episode of Films and Stuff. If you haven't already, please subscribe and review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever podcasts are downloaded. Films and Stuff. There is no substitute.